Hey YouTube, what's up? This is Ben from ShouldIGetIt.com. I'm here with my friend Greg. Greg, say hi. What's up? And we have three different levels of strobes right here. So we have the Cowboy Studio strobe. This is my first studio light. It's like $60. I bought it almost 10 years ago. Then my next step up was the Alien B B1600. And then I got the Flashpoint Explore 600 TTL. Absolutely love this light. This is my go-to. I'm gonna buy a second one. If you guys haven't seen my review on this, check it out. But in this video, I just wanna show you guys if you use any of these three lights with the same modifier in an indoor environment, you get kind of similar looking results and with a little bit of editing, you can make them look pretty good. So I will show you guys the behind the scenes during the shoot with the three different lights. I'm gonna shoot them all on manual mode um, and all wired right here with this sync cable. And we're just gonna put a little adapter on the Nikon D750 with the Tamron 35 millimeter F1.8. If you have any questions, leave them in a comment down below, but let's get to shooting. All right, so that's what it looks like. And then we're gonna have Greg stand right here, maybe about five feet from it with just a white backdrop. No other lighting, all the other lights are off. We're gonna shoot with the decent 50. So with the Cowboy Studio light, which is up here, I'll bring it more into frame for you guys. It is looking pretty good, I would say. Here are the images captured with the Cowboy Studio light and that shoot through umbrella. This setup with the light stand is probably less than $100, including a wired or wireless trigger. So this is just to show you an example that you can even get a really cheap mono light or even get a used one. And for less than $100, you can get nice lighting. Now you don't need a studio backdrop. You can do this with a white wall or you can go you know, in any room of your house and shoot with whatever color wall you have there. And I will show you some before and after right here. So this is a before, this is an after, this is just edited all in Lightroom. You can see that right there. And here's another one. You can see the colors come out a little bit blue and purple. And here's the after where we've color corrected a little bit. So I'm gonna do a quick edit just to show you guys what I would do with this light. And here you can see it with the light in the image. So I'm just gonna hit reset so you can see what it came out of the camera looking at. So this is at ISO 100, 35 millimeters of 7.1, 1 200th of a second. First thing I'm gonna do is of course turn on lens correction. So we're gonna enable profile correction. We're gonna remove chromatic aberration and then we're gonna sharpen. So bring up the sharpening, hold alt or option on our keyboard and go to masking. Whatever's in white is gonna get sharpened. So I wanna just kind of get the outline of him and this logo on the shirt. I also want the blue to be a little bit stronger. So I'm gonna turn up the blue calibration saturation here. So you can see that controls the shirt and kind of the green the wall. It also makes his face a little bit more pink and orange. So I'm gonna bring the reds down a little bit there and boom, we're good. You can see we have some really nice soft fall off from the light here. And we also have a very nice catch light in the eyes. Catch light is the reflection of your light source right here. And we have this perfect circle in Greg's eyes. We'll give it a second here to load and boom, we're good. Now what I'm gonna do is brighten up the eyes. So I'm gonna take a radial filter, do exposure. And you can see that it's darker and I have that set right here, negative 1.10, just so I can see the area that I'm selecting. So I'm gonna feather it a little bit stronger and I'm gonna turn this exposure up about 0 0.19, 0 0.2 and turn the texture up pretty high. And that way you can see we get a little bit more detail out of the eyes. Right click and duplicate. We can bring it over to this eye, make it a little bit smaller and boom, we are set. So now, you can see the eyes are edited, it looks good. The last thing I'm gonna do is just adjust the exposure up a tiny, tiny pinch, bring the contrast up as well, and set the white balance using this tool. I can either select the door or the white wall behind Greg. Boom, there is proper white, and now we have our before and after. So you can see with this lighting setup that costs less than $100, we have a very nice studio photo of Greg with just one light one modifier, one light stand, and one wired sync cable. So the Cowboy Studio Light for 60 bucks, definitely would recommend. I'll have a link in the description if they still make these. And now let's move on to the Alien B1600. All right, so now we got the Alien B set up with the same modifier. Again, I'm gonna turn off my video light. It's gonna get a little dark in here, but we're gonna shoot photos of Greg again with the D750 and the 35, same settings, 1 200th F7.1. Plug in the sync port right here. And I'll actually get a photo of Greg with the behind the scenes camera right now. Let's see it. Sweet, that looks pretty good. It's a little on the dark side, so I'm gonna bring this up to about a quarter power. That was 132nd power. Quarter right here. All right, and that is already much, much brighter than full power of the uh, Cowboy Studio. So I'm gonna go to an eighth power. And what you have to do with the Alien Bees is you have to dump it every time you lower the power. So. We gotta do a test flash, now it turns green. 
Boom, and that is looking really, really clean. All right, Greg, let's put that camera down and we will shoot some more photos of it. Right off the bat with the Alien B light, the two things you'll notice is one, controlling the power is a lot easier because of the slider on the back, and two, because it's so much more powerful than the Cowboy Studio, you can actually keep the power down low on this, and that gives you a really fast recycle time. So you guys can see some of the shots here unedited, they look really clean. I wouldn't say it is a huge quality difference here, so if you have kind of a darker studio setting, between the Cowboy Studio light and the Alien B light, it's not that huge of a difference if you're going for this type of shot. Now when we get to the outdoors, you'll see it is a really big difference in the power output but overall the alien b you know is a 400 dollars light and it's not that much better than the cowboy studio here in this specific situation but again if you're looking to get an alien b i highly recommend it and yes you should get it so a couple of notes with the alien b one i don't have a modeling light bulb in it which is why it's a little bit dark right now so it makes it hard to focus but i can just turn on the house lights or i could get a modeling light bulb no big deal and the other thing is when you shoot really fast in succession this light cannot keep up at more than like a 16th power. So if you're trying to shoot really rapid fire shots, the Alien B1600 has a lot of power, but it cannot deliver it consistently. So now we're gonna move on to the Explore 600. It's a fully wireless system, it is battery operated, and then we're gonna go shoot with all three of these strobes outside and see how they do against the harsh midday sun. It has a modeling lamp built into it. It's an LED light, it's really nice. There's three levels of brightness. And I'm gonna shoot it on manual mode. It is the TTL model, but I'm gonna put it into manual. So right there, and we're gonna start at 164th power. It's really nice to change power. You can just go like that, and then we can also turn on the beep in the menu. Greg, go ahead and get that. And now every time it's ready to go, it'll beep. But you can see how fast that is, and blinding. All right, so now we have the Explorer 600 set up. We are gonna be plugging it into the D750, as we did with the two other lights, and we're gonna shoot same settings, one two hundredth of a second, F7.1. In terms of image quality, can you get the same type of shots with the Cowboy Studio, the Alien B, and the Explorer 600? Yeah, you can. You guys saw that, and you'll see it a little bit later in the video as well. But there are a couple of things I still love about the Explorer way more, even in this situation. One, the LED modeling light is fantastic. Two, the fact that there are no wires that need to be connected to it because it has a built-in battery and a wireless receiver is awesome. And three, the color consistency is really, really good, and it beeps when it's ready to fire another shot, which is awesome. So it's just very communicative, really easy to use, really easy to change the settings on the actual unit itself, as you can see here. And the colors look fantastic. So every time you take a photo, you know exactly what it's gonna look like, whereas with the other lights, every so often, you take one photo, it end up a little bit more green tones, and you take another, and it end up more magenta. Of course, you could change it in Lightroom uh, in post-processing when you are changing the white balance, but it's nice to have everything come out properly thanks to your light and being in camera. So overall, I would still recommend the Explorer if your budget can fit it. If not, go with the Alien B, and if you can't do that, then start with a cheaper light. And you know, just start where you can, but if it's a matter of waiting another month or two and getting the Explorer, start with that. It'll last you a lifetime. I'm buying another one. I actually sold all of my Alien Bs and Cowboy Studio lights after filming this video, and I'm sticking with the Explorer. So the Explorer 600 at 1 16th power looks really good. I'd say all the lights look kind of the same and once you correct the colors in Lightroom, they probably look pretty similar. Here's three of them side by side. So the Cowboy Studio on the very left, the Alien B in the middle, the Explorer 600 on the right. These are all very similar shots, all at 1 200th of a second, F7.1, ISO 100, 35 millimeters. Now what I'm gonna do with the Explorer 600 is have Greg move around and see how many of these shots it can get consistently lit. So Greg, just keep moving. All right, let's see. So at 116th power, this thing held consistent for about 10 frames, I wanna say. I'll put them all right here. And the lighting doesn't change at all, which is awesome. So now I'm gonna bring it up to uh, 1 4th power and see if it can do the same. And at full power, you're just probably not gonna need that. So we'll do a test at 1 4th. Go ahead, keep dancing around. All right, so we could hear it beep four times there, so it definitely missed some frames. So at a fourth power, it did maybe two frames in a row and then would miss three to four and then one to two frames. So not great, not terrible, um, really, really good. I've never had to do that, so. So we just finished shooting with the Explorer 600 and honestly, the Alien B and the Cowboy Studio Lite, they all look pretty similar, I think. Uh, from what I saw in the camera preview, I might change my mind. If I do, here's a voiceover. And if there was no voiceover, then I think they look the same. And in studio with controlled lights, you can get any one of these and you will be fine. Now what we're gonna do is take the Vagabond Mini Lithium Battery Pack, and we're gonna move these lights outside. And you can see outside right now, it is pretty bright. So we're gonna try and shoot some headshots of Greg with the same camera setup, same settings, and three different lights. <laughs> 